Residents of the Kapam community in Chekon local government area of Kaduna State woke up on August 28 last month to find their community devastated by strange toxic pollution. Their farmlands were damaged, crops and trees suddenly began to wither, livestock began dying and residents started falling sick. They would later discover that the source of the pollution is the petrochemical refinery in the community. Kapam is host to the Kaduna Refinery and Petrochemical Company in Northwest Nigeria. The National Environmental Standards and Regulation Enforcement Agency has since attributed the toxic pollution to hydrogen chloride emission from ruptured pipes in the refinery. But so far, nothing has been done in terms of remediation in the community. So for now, the residents are left to deal with the issues themselves. Now, we visited the community recently, and here is the story of some of the residents of the community. Akiola Olunowa Day is one of the big yam farmers in Kapam community. He grows his yam tubers in sacks and has five of such farms in the community. But all the farms are now gone, destroyed by the toxic pollutant of August 28. I don't have any, any other thing to do now. I borrow money in the bank to do this project, sir. I cannot lie to you. I need help. I have three children in the university. Presently, as you are looking at me, and I need to pay their school fees. What will I do? What will I do? So I don't know what to do. That's why I'm pleading to the world. If anybody who can assist me to come up again, that you try and do it, and that you do it directly to me, not through any third party. I am retired Lieutenant Colonel Dubagari. I retired to 2014, and I bought this place but it's five plots. The retired lieutenant colonel grows grain and ginger in his five plot farm. But the farm is now decimated by the pollutant. As, as you can see, uh, this is ginger. The ginger was very greenish, it's not turning yellow. That means the chemical has affected it. Look at my corn. Like guinea corn now, you can see, no one is surviving. The, all of the inside, they have dried up. Only the, co the, uh, the maize now is, dry, is drying gradually. The granite there completely was gone. We have to remove it to plant beans. And so many things inside. All I have a garden inside where I plant a lot of things. That is, I just have passion in farming. All my things are gone. Nothing to fall on now. We are supposed to be eating corn now, but look at the corn has come to another thing. We have nothing to eat. It's the same story for organic fertilizer producer and farmer Sunday Beth, whose one hectare grain farm is more or less now dead. We are, I am crying to for the people who can assist us because up to now I've not seen the refinery people to come and see what the level of damage, they damage our crop. So that is why we, we are, I am crying for the assistance, anybody that can assist us so that we we'll get what will feed the family and also see how we can revive the business. The devastation goes beyond farmland. The residents say many of their livestock are dead and many people in the community are now falling sick. Many animals died. Chicken died. Even I have them, I have part of it on my phone here that I can show you if you want to see. So even the health implication, since that thing, since that day, no day that I don't buy milk for my family to take. Because many of them have been complaining of chest pain, mountain bitterness, and the rest of it. I have bought roughly one carton of milk in my house to give to them. The management of the refinery is yet to issue any official statement on the actual cause of the pollution. But the National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency, NESRIA, says it may have been caused by ruptured pipes conveying hydrogen chloride. But one of the residents of the community who is a retired environmental geologist thinks he knows the exact cause of the pollution. Greenhouse uh, gas was released into the atmosphere that carry a lot of uh, poisonous gases, chlorofluorocarbon, carbon monoxide, methane gas. They were all released into the atmosphere that came down as acid rain. That's what we call it in geology, acid rain. 
that descended on the community, which affected me human beings. Some of the residents here, their body started scratching. Some had, to, uh, had a respiratory problem. They had to rush their children and wife to the hospital. Then in the morning, we noticed a lot of itching. And on the third day, we noticed that some of the livestock, like goat, chicken, they started dying. So we saw the toxicity, which even made the women to go and block the road to protect to the refinery. Because they approached the management and it seemed that there was lip service. This is a chemical substance that have entered. We inhale it and it has gone into the body. It's not something that you just... It go like, as you can see, it's killing the, this crop gradually. That is how it's killing human beings gradually. The residents say their lives have now been badly impacted and that they would need help as soon as possible. They say the sooner the help they are seeking comes, the better for them and their community. But there's no question that full recovery for Kapam community will take a very long time.